Hi, I'm Vincent Rajkumar, Professor of Medicine at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. The paper I'm about to discuss is on the high cost of cancer drugs in the United States and what we can do about it. The main reason Dr. Kantarjian and I wanted to do this paper was that although prices of all drugs in medicine is climbing, um, this is a problem that is particularly acute in cancer. In 2000, the average price of a cancer drug would be $5,000 to $10,000 a year. Now it's in the range of $100,000 a year. Secondly, Americans pay 50 to 100 percent more for the same drug than people in other parts of the world do. Finally, there is really no relationship between the benefit provided by a cancer drug and the cost of that drug in the market. These are issues that we need to address because our healthcare costs are climbing and it's a price that is being paid every day by patients as well as society. In this paper we explore the many reasons for the high cost of cancer drugs as well as provide some solutions. So if you ask pharmaceutical companies they will tell you four big reasons why the cost of cancer drugs is so high. Number one, it costs a billion dollars to bring a new drug to the market in the cancer arena. Number two, the, com the comparative benefit that is provided by a cancer drug in terms of prolonging life makes any cost worth it. Number three, market forces will make sure that the prices are reasonable. And number four, that any attempt to control prices will stifle innovation and make new drugs uh, coming to the market all that more difficult. In this paper, we discuss and debunk each of these myths. So what are the real reasons why cancer drug prices are so high? Number one, the, the cancer drug market is not representative of a free market economy and this is something that may catch you by surprise. See unlike antibiotics, cancer drugs don't represent a free market economy. Let me, ex let, let me explain. If you have a pneumonia and you have 10 antibiotics to choose from, there is real competition because once you use an antibiotic and the pneumonia goes away, you do not need the other nine. And therefore, that the availability of multiple antibiotics to treat a curable disease like a pneumonia helps bring the, keep the prices reasonable. Many, many cancers are incurable so that if you have five drugs to treat a certain type of cancer, it doesn't mean that if you use one drug, the other four are no longer needed. Typically, patients will need each of, their, each of these five drugs by the time the disease progresses. And that means that each drug really represents a monopoly in the sense that using one doesn't prevent, doesn't prevent the need for the other. So then each drug can, can be priced at whatever price the market will bear. And they are priced more according to what the competitors are rather than the value they provide. The second reason why cancer drugs are so expensive is that there is no relationship between value that the cancer drug provides and the cost of that drug in the United States because there is no regulatory body that is able to set a value-based pricing unlike other developed countries. A third reason is that once a drug is on the market, companies are afforded patent protection for many years. And that, you may say, limits the amount of profits that can be made to a sh short period of time. However, often new drugs, which are, m which are only minor improvements over the older ones, are discovered just in time as the patent ends. And the new drugs then are, take over the market and therefore the prices continue to be high uh, since they replace the older drug. And this, is, uh, this, this and other processes called patent evergreening is what we cover in this article. We do not have in the U.S. a value-based, cost-effective pathways to guide cancer therapy. What we need would, that would help would be treatment pathways that take cost-benefit into account when a cancer is managed. Finally, another big reason why cancer drug prices are so high is that there are laws that prevent Medicare from negotiating drug prices. So are there any solutions to this problem? Um, many of these solutions that we propose will require considerable change to law and uh, many of these changes are really, really hard. 
but we need to do something about it. And the big changes that we suggest in this article are number one, we need um, regulatory authority that can set value-based pricing. Number two, we need to have cancer care pathways developed by experts who are not conflicted um, that take cost-benefit into account. Number three, we, a we ask in this paper for laws to be amended so that Medicare can be allowed to negotiate drug prices. We need, to be, uh, we need to allow people to import drugs for personal use from other countries. Now that will be more like a free market. And finally, we call for a grassroots movement involving patients, patient organizations and others, including physicians, to bring this issue to the forefront and enable some changes to be made. We as physicians feel that it's, it's important for us to bring this matter to the attention of the public as well as other physicians and colleagues. And that is why we wrote this article. We hope that this article will stimulate debate. Uh, we are very much in favor of new drugs. We are very much in favor of innovation. We are very much in favor of prolonging lives of cancer patients and finding cures for cancer. But we feel we need to, to, we need to do that in a responsible manner that doesn't put a great financial burden on individual patients and on society. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.